good morning. Welcome. How are we doing? I hope you are all well. Welcome to Dr. Chip's Daily Dose and it's Tinker Like It's Thursday. And I'm really excited about this one. I think I say it about everyone actually, but I'm really excited about today because today is all about aeroplanes. My favourite thing. I've got the aeroplane shirt on. I've got an old aeroplane wing off of a model aeroplane that I built a few years ago that I'm going to use to explain a few things to you in a bit. And I get to share with you today a little bit where my love of aeroplanes uh, actually comes from. And um, it comes from my granddad, actually. And some of you have commented that you notice one of the pictures behind me has uh, aircraft on it. And that's actually my granddad. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about where my love of aircraft comes from, because I think it's really important or um, to share, if you have an interest, share it with people. I like sharing my interest in aircraft because that might encourage you to become really interested in aircraft and either become an engineer, aerospace engineer, or a pilot perhaps. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, but before I do all that, as usual, we do the showcase blog. So for those of you that are tuning in for the first time today, this is your part of the Daily Dose where I share the work that you have sent in uh, to <laughs> this email address. Sorry, I always point the wrong way. I'm just going to start doing that. Um, to this email address and goes on to this website and it showcases what you've been doing at home as part of the home learning and yesterday it was all about biomimicry and how nature has influenced uh, design, engineering design and we talked about the kingfisher and the bullet train, we talked about um, velcro coming from plants, the um, birds that you have on, on types of plants. Um, we also talked about, did I tell you about the ridges on the back of turbine blades? Yes, I did. And that idea for that actually comes from uh, uh, blue whales, fins. So we talked about all this and then you went off and you went and looked really closely at nature and, and particularly the water distribution in leaves. And you did some careful scientific drawings of leaves and I'm going to share some of those in just a second. Um, please do hit like and subscribe on YouTube. Don't I sound like a YouTuber saying that? Please hit like and subscribe. Um, but that means that you will get uh, um, notifications when I'm doing a new Daily Dose so you can keep um, up to date on that. This will be the last Daily Dose um, for, there won't be one next week because it is half term next week, so we can all take a break from our learning and we can take some time off from learning. Um, so there won't be any uh, next week, but it will be back the week afterwards as schools are continued, um, most of them to be shut. We're gonna have to just see what happens after that, um, when schools, the majority of schools are opening and when I might have to go into my school, etc. cetera, uh, but I'll keep you posted. And what you can do is if you go onto the website, um, I'll show you in a second, there's a place where you can subscribe, you can send your email in, and then you get emails from me telling you each week what, am I, what I'm going to do the following week. So there we go, there's all that out the way. Now let's jump on the Showcase blog and share some of this wonderful work from the Daily Dosers out there. Uh, Okay, so from yesterday's uh, biomimicry, we've got Sammy, first of all, who did a fantastic, excellent scientific sketch of the leaves, and he noticed that there weren't many right angles. This is what we were talking about. Is there a better way to distribute water rather than the right angles that we often see in our pipes? And based on what he saw, he thought perhaps there were. Uh, Isabella and Austin, um, I've taken the liberty of putting a smiley face over with your faces because obviously I can't show them. And I thought I might as well go for a silly smiley with the tongue stuck out. Um, so there we go. Um, but I love, absolutely love, Isabel, this um, habitat that you made for badgers, a badger set. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Mum said that you, and there's um, Austin doing his careful observational drawings of the leaves, and you went for a walk in um, woods or forests near to yours. You're very fortunate living somewhere that looks so uh, kind of um, rural. 
Um, and I really wanted to put this picture up um, because you can see actually the branching, the way branches distribute and go into smaller branches, that's the same kind of thing that we see actually when we look closely at leaves, the way they split off. And they all follow um, that same mathematical equation, would you believe? They all follow the same um, formula, which describes how branches get smaller and then separate and get smaller and separate. Really interesting, the mix uh, between maths and the natural world. Um, so well done to you two. Uh, Nancy, thank you for sending, sending me in your um, drawings. You did a whole two pages of different uh, scientific drawings of different types of leaves, looking at the vein system in them. Excellent. Abdullah and Mustafa, good morning, boys. I hope you are well. Um, you sent in the picture that you've done. You also let me know about a couple of projects you're doing uh, where you've been going on sort of bug safaris in the garden. There's a moth here that you saw. Fantastic. Isn't the colouring fantastic on moths like that? I'm sure that I remember learning somewhere that in the natural world, um, things often have quite striking colouring, making use of reds and blacks um, to kind of give the impression that they are dangerous or perhaps uh, poisonous, um, whereas they're not. I don't think that moth is very dangerous, but it's got quite striking colours. I'd have to double check my learning on that to make sure that I'm right, but I'm sure I remember learning about that somewhere, uh, that they kind of imitate the, the colours of more dangerous animals. Um, you've also been putting uh, bird boxes up, so I do hope that you get some uh, birds nesting in the bird boxes. Um, and then we got Ian from Longfield Primary School. Well done to Ian. Excellent drawings there as well. Again, you've taken a few different leaves um, and you've drawn the uh, vein system in them. Look, I can see as well from yours that no right angles. Maybe our engineers have been getting it wrong all these years. And the Welsh boys, very fortunate. Mum had a macro lens um, for her camera and has sent me these incredible pictures up close of leaves. Look at that, they're fantastic. Thank you so much for sending those in. And the boys use those pictures and also their observation skills looking directly at the leaves to make the sketches of them. And they were talking, they had lots of discussions about why some of these veins are darker, some of them are lighter, which sounds brilliant. Lots of scientific questions being asked, which is super. And we've got Isabella. We've got a video from Isabella here. Isabella also adding some colour as well to her drawings and taking a lot of care and attention to make sure that she's adding the lighter parts where it's lighter and the darker parts where it is darker. That is fantastic, Isabella. And I love the fact that you managed to get your cat in there at the beginning. Let's just go back to the cat. Because you know that I like cats. I've got one here somewhere. I don't know where he is today. Uh, he, In fact, he woke me up this morning. Would you believe he woke me up? Oh, look at your lovely cat. Do let me know what your cat is called. Yeah, my cat woke me up at 1 a.m. this morning to ask me if he could go out. And I said, no, he could not go out. He could go back to bed. Um, but well done to Isabella. Uh, your super drawings. And there we go. So thank you for everyone for sharing those with me yesterday. Let's come back to here and go to that. Is it still working? Yes, it is. Um, so well done to those. And also we've got a few people that wanted to go on the register. Haven't been able to necessarily all of them send work in, but wanted to shout out. And of course I'll give them a shout out. So Good morning, Lucy, George, Louise and Tom. Lovely to have you joining us today. Good morning, Nancy and Princey. Welcome. Um, and thank you for your very kind emails saying that you enjoy watching and uh, hope I have a nice day, etc. And good morning, Abdullah and Mustafa. Uh, again, and, and I do hope those bird boxes get filled. Excellent. OK, so we'll then come back to the other thing I've got on my sheet here is, of course, the riddle. Um, we'll come back to that at the end. Just if you didn't hear the riddle yesterday, this is what it was, and you can be pondering it as we go through. Um, so one, uh, a one-story house or bungalow um, is everything is yellow. There's yellow walls, yellow ceiling, yellow chairs, yellow tables, yellow bed, yellow cushions, yellow kitchen, yellow ceiling. Have I said ceiling? Everything's yellow. What color 
are the stairs. Hmm, pondering on that, and we'll come back to it at the end. Right, okay, let's do it. This, ta-da, this design, this exact design is the world record holder for the longest flight ever by a paper airplane. And I've been playing with it this morning and it is it flies beautifully. Um, and it was designed by a chap called John Collins. I can show you John Collins here. Da, 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 da. Okay, there's John Collins, also known as the paper airplane guy. Um, and the record was actually set back in 2012, so eight years ago, and has never been broken. Okay, and today we are going to learn how to make the world's best paper aeroplane. Um, and then you can have a go at flying it. And I want you to see how far you can get yours to fly. And I also want you to see if you can beat the world record. Now, I can't show the video of um, the world record on here because that would be copyright because I'm playing somebody else's video as part of my show. So what I've done is I've put a link to it on the website here. So if you go to home, okay, there are a few links to go with today's session. We've got the world, there we go, world record paper airplane flight. And I've also got a video there of me flying my plane, which I'll talk to you a little bit about in a second. So do go and watch the world record attempt because this, it goes, I think it was 67 meters. Uh, they have an American football player, quarterback, who's used to throwing the ball a long way, throw it, poof, and it flies all the way up and then glides all the way down. It flies beautifully. Let me see if I can get this go past the camera, actually. Here we go. Oh, no. Totally missed it. Sorry. Um, so Now, before I explain how to build it, the first thing I'm going to do is do a quick lesson in how aircraft actually fly and explain to you why I love aircraft so much. So this is the reason that I love aircraft so much. This is, pointing the wrong way, here we go. This is my granddad. Uh, so this is my dad's dad. And my granddad was a pilot. And he was a pilot, first of all, in the Second World War. And then after the war, he flew commercial airliners, like that you go on holiday. And here, here he is. This picture of him is flying one of the very first uh, commercial airliners called the Comet. Um, and he, so when I was younger, your age, um, he just kind of retired, but he'd talk a lot about the flying that he did, and I'd listen to him, and he'd encourage me uh, by building model aircraft and taking me to um, air shows, etc. So uh, he, through the, the, the Second World War, taught pilots to fly. So he taught young guys to fly out in Canada. He was an instructor, he taught them. And then, later on, after the war, um, him and my uh, gran lived out in Beirut, uh, Lebanon, and he flew for Middle East Airlines. So that was an airline that's no longer around anymore. And he ended up, at, towards the end of his career, flying this aircraft, which is a, a 747. Uh, it's a 200 series. And he taught people within, taught the pilots within... Um, MEA, he was in charge of all of the training of their pilots for MEA. So that's where my love of aircraft comes from. Um, and in pride of place in my office, I have this. Um, now, when you're a pilot uh, on your uniform, to show that you've got your pilot's qualification, you have what we call wings. These are wings. And these are my granddad's wings. Um, these are the RAF ones that he had in 1942 to 1945. Then he also flew for British European Airways, British West Indian Airways, and that's his Middle East Airlines one for, where he flew from 1958 to 1981. So I'm very, very proud of that. It, it stays on my wall in my office. And he inspired me to learn about aircraft and uh, take up flying. So here is me in a, here is me, that's not very good grammar, here I am, 
Um, now, my the aeroplane I fly is a lot, lot smaller than the aeroplane that my granddad flew. I fly a little microlight, and here I am taking Ian, who is a good friend of mine. He was the one that I did the Lego Man thing uh, with, if you watched that episode. Uh, here I am taking him for a flight around Manchester. And as I mentioned before, on the showcase blocks, on the Dr. Chips website, I've put a link there where you can watch a video of me coming in to land at Barton, which is an airport near Manchester. Um, and it's filmed in 360, so you can actually scroll around. Or if you've got a headset, VR headset, you can put it on and you can look around and you can watch us come in to land. So there you go. I hope you enjoy watching that. I am really missing flying at the moment because we've been grounded up until now, actually. We can start to fly a little bit more. Uh, it's something that I have been really missing. Now, I want to make sure that my daily dosers know how an aeroplane flies, how a wing works and it stays in the air because there is a lot of... I was going to say rubbish, and that sounded a bit rude. No, it is. It's rubbish. There are, there's a myth that's out there about how aeroplane wings work to do with the different shape of the top and the bottom, and it's a load of rubbish. And I want to show you today exactly how an aeroplane wing works, and then so you can explain it to others. Okay, so I'm going to show you the rubbish explanation first of all, and then we're going to put a big cross through it and say, that's wrong. And then I'm going to show you how it actually works. So, rubbish explanation first. This is um, a wing off of a um, model aeroplane that I designed a few years ago. And if you look very carefully at the end, you will see that if you look at the cross section of the wing, okay, forget this back bit, the aerolon down, just imagine it's doing that. You'll see that the bottom of the wing is flat okay can you see that this flat surface here okay and the top of the wing is curved all right bottom is flat and top of the wing is curved okay i'm sorry i'm gonna have to let the cat in because he's knocking come on there bud in you come he does that thing where he goes like that and knocks at the door there he goes now what people say which is uh, not true is that that shape of the wing is the reason that aeroplanes can fly. Uh, this is the explanation that they give. They say that because there is a flat bottom and a curved top. Sorry, now the cat's shouting that he wants to go out. Where do you want to go, bud? I'll just let him carry on shouting. They say that when this goes through the air, the air travels quicker over the top because it's got further to go. And it goes slower underneath so that it gets to the back at the same time. And that because it goes quicker over the top, there's a reduction in something called pressure, which is just a force. So the pressure force on the top is very small. And because it goes slower under the bottom, there is a larger pressure force. And because there's a larger pressure force on top and a lower pressure force pushing down, sorry, larger pressure force pushing up from underneath and a lower pressure force pushing down from above, overall, we get a force in that direction called lift. And this is rubbish. Say after me, rubbish. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay. Because... If this is the case, then what? Then aircraft wouldn't be able to fly upside down. And some aircraft do fly upside down. In fact, that aircraft, I flew upside down. So when it's upside down, it would be the other way around, but it is still able to stay up. You see aerobatic aircraft turning upside down and still flying along. Okay, so this is rubbish. If you ever... Find yourself in a situation, you might be in a museum or you might be at a science fair or something and people start telling you that the reason an aeroplane can fly and make, create lift is because of the shape of the wing and, that because, and because of the fact that means air flows quicker over the top and reduces the pressure. I want you to say, rubbish. Okay, I'm going to show you, explain to you 
Do you want to catch the paper? It's like the cat is still pestering me here. Go! Yep, he's done. He's off. I'm going to show you how uh, an aeroplane stays up. It is nothing to do with the shape of the wing. What it is to do with, though, is that the angle of the wing against the oncoming air. So if we have some air uh, coming from here, because we are, the aeroplane is traveling through the air, all we need to do, finished? All we need to do is put the wing, and it can be a flat wing. It doesn't even have to be a curve. We put the wing at an angle to the oncoming air. Okay, and we call this angle the angle of attack. Okay, so the, the wing has to be at an angle to the air. And then what happens is as the air flows over this, the air on the underside hits the underside of the wing, flows down like that, okay, and the air over the top of the wing sticks to the wing a little bit and goes like that. And what we have done is we have changed the direction of the airflow. We have forced the airflow downwards. Okay, we forced the airflow. It was going nice and horizontal. And now, because we've put something in it at an angle, it is now deflecting downwards. Now, there was a scientist that we learned about a few weeks back or days back, I can't remember now, called Newton that said every action, so if we push something down, we get an equal and opposite reaction up. And that is what causes um, lift on an aeroplane, okay? So absolutely nothing to do with the shape. The shape does affect things about how efficient it is and drag, etc. But you can take a piece of flat, you could build a wing out of something flat. In fact, if you do it very carefully when you're in a car don't hold your hand right the way out but just take your flat hand put it out just open a little bit of the window put it out a little bit okay and then all you need to do as soon as you tilt your hand and give it an angle of attack you'll feel your hand push upwards because you're generating lift all right so there we go dispelled that myth about how and you see this being taught in schools so please, if your teacher ever teaches you this, say, sir, miss, that's polite, being polite, but that's rubbish. Right, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at building the world's... I'm going to throw this to keep the cat occupied. As... Here he is. He's about to jump after the bit of paper on the table there. Off you go. Go on, off you go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Um, so we're now going to have a go at building the world's best paper airplane. And don't try and follow me along at the same time doing this. I want you to... It's getting caught up in the wires now. Brilliant. Uh, I want you to watch me do it, and then I want you to uh, watch it back and pause it so you can... Make sure that you, um, you follow the, the steps one at a time, okay? Because it's not too complicated, um, but there are a few steps to it. Now, what I have done is I have marked on, let me just make sure that you can see the whole of my paper as best we can. Move that out the way. Do that. Okay, place that there. Okay, so I'll just have to move it around to make sure you can see the right bits at the right time. Let's make me nice and small. And make this as big as possible. There we go. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here, uh, and it's a little bit of a lag, so I'll just take it nice and slow, is that we are going to fold, uh, taking from this corner here, we are going to fold right down to the opposite corner, all right? So that is the first step. Let me just work out, because I really don't want you to be struggling to see this. I need to hold this up a little bit higher. Can I do it like that? There we go. Okay, I'll just have to hold it. This is not very good, is it? Okay, 
But there we go. So the first step is that we take one side here and we fold it right across. No, that's not going to work. Let's just do it like this and I'll make sure that I show you it clearly. So we fold it right across until that edge lines up with this edge. Okay. And then we unfold it. All right. And we do exactly the same going the other way. Okay, go exactly the same going the other way. Can you hear can you hear can you hear all that? That is my cat going wild after the bit of paper. He's just run into the table as well, which has moved everything. Uh, so we fold it the other way, okay, and then we open it back up. And then what I want you to do, just like I've done, is I want you to put two lines along those folds because that's going to help us for the next bit. Then what we do with the next bit is that we take uh, this side here, this edge, edge here, okay, and we fold it in until the edge lines up with that line that we've put on. Okay, so this is now what it looks like. I just hold it up to you there. So we've taken that edge and we folded it in. And we do the same on the other side. Okay, so on the other side, put it back under there, there we go. So on the other side, um, we fold that edge there to line up with this line, like so. All right. So then we just get this kind of simple dart shape. Okay. Then what we do at the end here um, is that we are going to, where that crosses, we're going to fold the whole thing, where it crosses there, we fold the whole thing back, like so. All right. Now it's getting a little bit smaller now to show you in the whole frame. There we go. And then what we do is we take this edge up here, okay, there, and we fold it in. Remember, you can watch this back as many times as you need to and pause it to, to follow each step. And then we take this edge here and we fold it in as well, like so. Uh, and then this bit here tucks up. And that's going to actually lock everything together. Okay. It's going to lock everything together. Now, let me just quickly show you that one more time. So first step is to fold across. Like so. Uh, open it up. Second step is to fold across like so. Open it up and then draw your lines on. Okay, then what you do is you take this edge here and fold it in so it lines up with your line. You do the same on the other side. So you take this edge here, fold it up with that line. Okay, then you fold over at the top of that cross and down. Then you take top edge here, fold it into the middle. Top edge here, fold it into the middle. And tuck that little tail bit up. Okay. Then what you do is you fold it in half. And then the final step is that you need to fold back your wings. Okay, so one on that side and then turn it over and one on that side okay and there you have unfold it a little bit and then you have the world this is the exact plane that set that world record now interesting one one thing i learned watching or reading a little bit about uh, john collins saying that the most important thing when you've got it like this you can still tweak it. So make sure when you look at it straight on, 
the wings. You don't want the wings pointing down. That's called something called anhedral, and that will make it really unstable. What you want is the wings pointing up a little bit. That gives it something called dihedral, make it a lot more stable. And on the corners here, right at the back, you want to just gently flick the corners up. Okay, not crease them up, but flick them up. Now that, and I'm going to give it a go in here, I know they fly beautifully, okay? So I'm going to give it a go. I know exactly what's going to happen here. I'm going to throw it. My cat's going to pounce on it and ruin it. But I'm going to sacrifice this one to test it, and I'll build another. So, in fact, if I stand back here, you might be able to see it fly through the camera. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, yes. Flies beautifully. So, there we go. Go and have a go. Yep, and the cat's pounced on it. Um, go and have a go at that today. Have a go at building the world's best paper airplane. Send me some pictures in so I can pop them on the showcase blog. And go and watch the video of the world record attempt to see how far you can get yours to fly in comparison. And do let me know if you think you've uh, set a new world record because that would be fantastic. Uh, right, just to finish today then. So riddle time. The riddle from yesterday about the yellow bungalow with yellow walls and yellow ceilings and blah, 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 yeah. What colour are the stairs? It doesn't have any stairs. It's a one-storey house or a bungalow. So well done to all of these people who've got that straight away. Dave and George, Lucy, Miss Parks, Caitlin, Beatrice, Sammy, Lily and Julie Chamberlain, Abdullah and Nancy, well done to all of you. I could not fool you. Straight away you emailed me to say, well, don't be silly. It hasn't got any stairs. Um, and now for this riddle, uh, let's go to this one here. This riddle for to keep you busy. Now, over the next few days or next week until I see you for the daily dose again, I'm going to use cocktail sticks for this, but don't worry, you don't need cocktail sticks. You can do it with anything really, pencils, or even just drawing on a piece of paper. But I just thought I would show you it with cocktail sticks because it makes it a bit more visual for the daily dose. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to lay out whatever you have, or you're going to draw out, if you're not using uh, physical things, the shape of a fish. Now, this is an abstraction because it's a simplified form of a fish. Let me get show you this on here. There we go. I, don't know, I think my camera might have gone a bit different today, which is why it's struggling to uh, show the full thing. There we go. Right, so we have a fish, and currently it looks like it is swimming from the right to the left. So this is its nose, and this is its tail back here. Okay. You are only allowed to move three of the matchsticks and then it has to be pointing the opposite way okay so it has to look like it's swimming from left to right here it looks like it's swimming this direction there's a real delay there we go move only three matchsticks and it has to be pointing in that direction okay that is the Riddle, the brain teaser, to keep you occupied uh, over the next week. And you can just do it by drawing it out. Watch this back again just to show, to make sure that you know how the arrangement of the sticks. Draw it out and then give that a go. Only allowed to change three. I know that when we did the last one where you were only allowed to, uh, to move a certain number of bits, it really puzzled my dad and my mum and dad for a while. So they might be having a go at this one as well. Um, so, yeah, no Daily Dose next week, but do go onto the website and um, put in your details so I can send you an email towards the end of the next week explaining what we're going to be doing the week, I, the week after. I'm going to get my uh, thinking cap on for some really cool new activities, things that we haven't done before. Have a wonderful week next week, um, relaxing, taking a break from your home learning. Thank you for tuning in and if you have got any suggestions or anything or you just want to say hello and share the work that you've done please do send in an email to me and then i'll get it onto the showcase blog 
Okay, take care, and I will see you in a week. Bye for now. Thank you.